My name is Pete Metzger, and I was a Marine military assistant or military aide to President Reagan. Military aide is responsible to the president for executing his constitutional responsibilities in the event of attack against the United States, first and foremost. Uh, secondly, perform ceremonial duties uh, as required. Your job is to be at the president's side in the event he or she would need to make a very difficult decision. And so the, uh, I get asked over and over again what the football is, and I used to say it's a Time magazine, a tin sandwich, it doesn't really matter. But what it is, is that it's the assistance the president needs to make an informed decision in the event of a nuclear attack. This past Sunday, at 22 minutes after 6 Beirut time, with dawn just breaking, a truck, looking like a lot of other vehicles in the city, approached the airport on a busy main road. There was nothing in its appearance to suggest it was any different than the trucks or cars that were normally seen on and around the airport. But this one was different. At the wheel was a young man on a suicide mission. The truck carried some 2,000 pounds of explosives. But there was no way our Marine guards could know this. Their first warning that something was wrong came when the truck crashed through a series of barriers, including a chain link fence and barbed wire entanglements. The guards opened fire, but it was too late. When the attack of the Beirut bombing in 1983 occurred on October 23rd, I was out of town. I was called by the Situation Room to immediately return to Washington, which I did. Uh, the president was in a very um, exercised state of mind, being, and we talked about what he could do to work with the Marine families who were killed. So we planned a trip that flew from uh, Washington, D.C to Cherry Point, North Carolina on Air Force One. At Cherry Point, we transferred to Marine One and flew to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. We got to the, uh, to the ceremony, it was pouring rain. And he and Mrs. Reagan stood through the entire ceremony in the pouring rain, dedicated to the Marines and sailors who were killed. At the conclusion of the ceremony, which was very somber, he turned to me and he said, I want to meet anybody who wants to meet me. And the families I want to talk to. So we found a small place in the 2nd Marine Division headquarters, and he and Mrs. Reagan stood for hours and talked to the families. I've never seen such a show of strength and emotion as he and Mrs. Reagan displayed. I gotta tell you, the president made a huge mark in history that day at Camp Lejeune. Last weekend, I was awakened in the early morning hours and told that six members of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, joined by Jamaica and Barbados, had sent an urgent request that we join them in a military operation to restore order and democracy to, Gren to Grenada. They were proposing this action under the terms of a treaty, a mutual assistance pact that existed among them. These small, peaceful nations needed our help. Three of them don't have armies at all, and the others have very limited forces. The legitimacy of their request, plus my own concern for our citizens, dictated my decision. I believe our government has a responsibility to go to the aid of its citizens if their right to life and liberty is threatened. On the morning of October 25th, Prime Minister Eugenia Charles, Charles, who was the Prime Minister of Dominica, he flew her up here to get the briefing and we went in the Roosevelt Room and the entire cabinet was present, the Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State, all the cabinet officers, and the Chairman JCS, General Vesey. And they laid out the entire plan, minus the confidential parts, for Prime Minister Charles, so she had a sense of what was going to happen in a neighboring nation. One of the most wonderful things I ever heard the president say was, um, the chairman said, we can monitor real time. We can send you photos. We can talk to the Marines on the ground. He said, no, the boys are busy. Let me know when it's done. That day, particularly um, surrounded by the leadership of our country by any definition and to hear the way they conducted themselves and prepared the president and to hear the president make a decision like that was a memory of a lifetime. My service for the president ended the following way. Uh, Mrs. Reagan they had just announced for the re-election. Mrs. Reagan asked me, she said, Ronnie and I would like you to stay on. I told the Reagans I was very flattered that there'd be a wonderful Marine coming in. And so when I left the White House, he hand wrote me the, the most beautiful letters. I have them locked up at home, why I locked up. But just like your own father writing here or something, it's just very, very, very sweet. And um, we stayed in touch uh, until he got ill. Well, in terms of advice to former uh, future military aides, the advice I would give is pay attention, 
and just know what your boss wants to do. And when asked for a tough decision, be prepared to make a tough decision. As far as future commanders in chief, it would be some, well, I think a reach for me to talk up to future presidents, but uh, just recognize the fact that the eyes of the world are on you and you're the leader of the free world and everything, but everything you do or say is a matter of record.